In this video, we're going to discuss the learning objectives or learning outcomes for Chem 1315, Survey of Organic Chemistry. The first thing I want to say is that organic chemistry is an immense subject that can't possibly be covered in full in a single semester. Instead of taking that approach and trying to cram as much organic chemistry as they can down your throat, I really want us to spend a lot of time on generalized thinking, generalized problem-solving strategies, and what I call ways of seeing organic molecules. This will allow you to walk into any situation in your future career or future studies where an organic molecule appears, wherever that might be, and engage with that molecule or that reaction confidently, comfortably, and rationally in a way that you can be comfortable with and that the people around you can buy the arguments for. So we'll keep our focus really on generalized thinking in this course, and I hope you can transfer a lot out in terms of thinking about molecules and chemistry rationally regardless of the context. So let's get into the specific learning outcomes now. The first is I'd like you to be able to infer the electronic structures and spatial properties of organic molecules from Lewis structures. Now you probably have some experience with Lewis structures from your introductory chemistry course and these are lines and letters and sometimes dots on a page or a computer screen that tell us how atoms are connected and are in a rough sense where electrons are located. So this for example is an abbreviated Lewis structure for a molecule benzaldehyde and it's just lines and letters on a piece of paper to a novice but to an expert there's a lot under the surface of this molecule. Recognizing, for example, that this carbon is electrophilic, what we'll call electrophilic, and that this oxygen is nucleophilic and weakly basic. These are things you'll be able to do, seeing under the surface of Lewis structures, and we'll be even able to go to a deeper level of localized molecular orbitals, developing a very deep and highly useful picture of electrons and molecules that allows us to build a bridge to reactivity, and that's key. We want to bridge the gap from structure to properties and chemical reactivity. The second objective is to apply qualitative reasoning strategies, including reasoning by analogy and probabilistic reasoning. In your introductory chemistry courses, a lot of the reasoning was quantitative. I'm solving a problem to get to a number. That's not the case in your organic chemistry courses. You will often be working qualitatively. For example, looking at a picture of a molecule Let's think about benzaldehyde again. Looking at a picture of benzaldehyde undergoing some kind of chemical process. Let's just say that sodium hydroxide was listed here. And the question is, what will be the structure of the product that comes out? There's no math involved in this. This is why organic chemists love what we do. There's very little math. But there is a lot of qualitative reasoning involved. Reasoning by analogy. I'm thinking back to things I've seen previously. Have I seen groups like the carbonyl group? before. What do I know about how sodium hydroxide reacts, for example, for my introductory chemistry courses? Probabilistic reasoning. I'm thinking mechanistically. How can hydroxide engage with benzaldehyde? Well, there might be multiple things that could take place, and that's going to get me going down multiple potential avenues toward potentially different products. And I've got to be able to weigh those possibilities. And maybe I'm not 100% sure, but maybe I'm 80-20 or 75-25. Being comfortable with that kind of probabilistic reasoning is important and highly useful for this course. And the analogy I always like to use here is IBM Watson. This is how Watson operates, takes in a huge body of data and builds a probabilistic model of what the most likely correct answer to a question is given the data that it has, given the information and its information processing model that it has built in. Our third objective is to be able to draw and analyze reasonable organic reaction mechanisms. And this is how we engage rationally with organic reactions, breaking them down into mechanistic steps that appear over and over and over again. That's going to require us to master representations of how electrons move in organic reactions. That's what's called the curved arrow formalism. This is just a bookkeeping mechanism on some level, but it can be ascribed deeper physical meaning, and we'll talk about how that works later in the course. Organic reaction mechanisms are actually built out of a fairly small number of what are called elementary steps. The mechanistic diversity and the amazing vastness of organic chemistry grows out of all the different ways we can apply these elementary steps to different structures, in different orders, and all that kind of stuff. 
but the basic set of elementary steps is actually quite small. It allows you to organize the vast information repository of organic chemistry into a relatively small number of boxes, believe it or not. And stability factors. Stability factors are key in guiding our thinking as we make these probabilistic choices of how a reaction is going to proceed. Is the direction I'm going in making sense? With an understanding of the thermodynamic stability factors in reactions involving thermodynamic control, you'll be able to do this with relative ease. And we'll talk about transition states and kinetic control as well, and a lot of these same stability factors come into kinetic considerations also. The final objective here is to apply what I'm roughly calling the ways of seeing organic chemistry to areas of interest to you. So two pieces to this learning objective that are worth discussing. First, the ways of seeing. And this goes back to the point that a lot of the specific information in this course is not that important. It's the way you engage with a molecule or a reaction that matters. What's significant? What's important about this structure? What jumps out at me? What surprises me? What is in line with my expectations? By understanding the various ways of seeing organic molecules and reactions, you'll be able to answer these questions, again, confidently, in a way that's consistent with how we understand the science today. And the ways of seeing are things like localized molecular orbital theory, conformation, stereochemistry, um, the elementary steps of reaction mechanisms. These are all frameworks for understanding the structures and dynamics of organic molecules that you can apply to any organic molecule. And that's where the second half of this learning objective comes in, and structures and reactions in areas of interest to you. Partly because of the vastness of organic chemistry and partly because I want you to be an active participant in the course, the course will include opportunities for you to contribute structures, reactions, problems, questions that pertain to the general reaction types that we'll see, particularly in the second half of the course. Additionally, there will be a semester-long project in which you'll be looking within a specific subfield of interest to you for signature questions, big problems, big challenges that can be at least partially addressed or understood using the concepts and skills from Chem 1315. And the idea, again, is to apply these ways of seeing in an area of interest to you so that you become an active participant in the course and you contribute to what we study. Given the vastness of organic chemistry, I'm really not equipped to come up with a set of interesting reactions that are going to, say, be maximally interesting for everyone in the course. I hope to engage you in that process so that we can essentially generate a course together that we can all enjoy.